Tilt your head back. What are you doing? Exploring your veins. Feels... Feels good. Different blood has different qualities. A taste. A kick. trying to guess what yours is like. Atlanta, it's good to talk with you again. Um, and once again for a genre piece. Uh, I know, yeah. What are the chances? Yeah, yeah. And uh, this time, uh, though, this one a bit more uh, introspective kind of story because it's like merging genre with addiction. Mm-hmm. And uh, I find that that's kind of like a trend with the characters you get to play is that you've played in the world of genre. You play characters that are in the genre world but not your stereotypical versions of those characters. Is that something that attracts you to these characters? 100%. I think that, especially for this project, uh, the ambiguity surrounding vampires and the vampire lore, um, those parameters that we sort of played within, the lines were not finite whatsoever. So I think, uh, similar to past roles that I've played, specifically the one on Killjoys, um, you know, that wasn't your typical uh, alien uh, uh, dictator, ruler, child. Yeah. Uh, and this is in your stereotypical uh, vampire. So, yeah, it's definitely more intriguing to me to not have to submit to your stereotypical uh, vampirism. I'm a vampire. I kind of figured. I'm going to suck your blood and get high as fuck. I'm going to kill you. Get on with it then. I really had to rely on Blaine, the director, on his eye to make sure that it was compelling enough. Uh, Because you're right, she's sort of jaded and... Uh, she's recessed, she's sort of uh, observing people from afar, and so uh, she's not an active player in society. So yeah, I had to just like, just like, like download all of my energy and animated faces and just stick it in a cupboard somewhere while I was filming and really just trust uh, Blaine's direction that, you know, it's nuanced and it will read on camera, which is, I saw it for the first time last night, so I actually wasn't sure how it was going to read, but uh, yeah, I just had to, I, I had faith in, in Blaine's direction and, and I think it worked out. What was that noise you did to represent your energy? What was that? <clears throat> so did that actually come out of you before every, every take? In a way, a version of it. It was probably okay. more of a breath out because if the sound guy had to hear that before every single take, I think he he, he might murder me or just turn off my sound. Yeah, uh, yeah. But no, honestly, it was a version of it. It's sort of like a decompression and you just have to slide into, like, lack of a better word, sort of the, the darkness and the, and the muted tones of the movie. Kicking Blood made its premiere at TIFF last night. And a really interesting kind of take on the world of vampires and the world of addiction, which again, that's something that we've seen in genre before, but usually in the the stories where addiction is used for vampires, blood is not a life source. And then in where it's not used for addiction, blood is just considered food. And you decided to do both here, which I found really interesting. So basically putting a character in a, I want to get clean, but if I do, I'll die. So what was it like working with that concept? I'm glad you picked up on that because we, uh, we tried to dispense with the, uh, the vampire aspects of mythology that, that didn't mean so much to us, like mirrors and garlic and coffins and bats, you know, um, what, what meant something to us was, uh, you know, vampires living in the dark and, and losing your humanity. And 
uh, becoming addicted to something. And as far as addiction goes, people who, you know, have mental health issues or just trying to cope with the meaningless of li- meaninglessness of life turn to these substances because they're fun and they make you feel good at first, right? And you sort of, you sort of have to uh, acknowledge that. So that that is that is just that's one aspect of addiction we sort of you know realized and thought we have to we have to depict that we have to depict the idea of getting high if, if you're addicted that there's you know it's because it makes you feel good. The use of uh, you know trying to regain one's humanity was like a really interesting aspect because yeah because a lot of a lot of people who are going through addiction think you know because they're so addicted that if I try to get off this and if I go through it and it's going to be so hard, I don't think I'll be able to live with this. And yeah, it was really interesting to see how you approach that in the film as well throughout the film. Cause it's like, as a viewer, I'm sitting there watching, well, yeah, she's going to die. If she doesn't, <laughs> if she doesn't drink blood, mm-hmm. what's going on? And mm-hmm. yet you were able to give, you know, an actual conclusion, which is something that can fit, with people that are going through addiction in real life. So was that really important to you to make sure that there was kind of like a strong parallel between what addicts really go through? Oh, absolutely. In a number of ways. Um, As I said before, the substances make you feel good and they are fun at first. Um, And also um, it's not all dreariness. You know, there are many people with addiction issues in and around my neighborhood. Uh, you know, working hard, collecting bottles and, and digging for stuff they can sell to get the hit that they need so badly. And, you know, I don't call the police. I don't ignore them. I talk to them, you know, um, and their lives aren't, you know, they, they need compassion and help, but their lives aren't complete misery. They, they love and laugh and they have stories and, uh, it's important to show that as well. I mean, because that's that's how we connect with humans is 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 sharing sharing stories and and, and laughter. Um, yeah, and also you have to show uh, hope. You know that uh, it's not just about addiction; it's about recovery. It definitely added uh, another layer um, because it makes the withdrawal and the process of getting clean the stakes are just so much higher than they would be if it was just uh you know if blood was just seen as food but like you said it's food and this escape you know anna and the other vampires they love to get high so kicking that addiction and also trying to kick your life source yeah it's it's very um, complex. And so I think it added another layer that just makes this film uh, not your stereotypical vampire flick. So yeah, I'm still sort of working through it. And even watching it last night, I was like, oh man, that's a big decision to try and to try and kick blood when you're addicted and you love to get high, but it might kill you, but you need to be human. So. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot going on. So, yeah, so this film, of course, you guys shot it in Sudbury, which uh, gets dark pretty mm-hmm. quickly during the winter. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was uh, like a three week shoot, I think. Was it three weeks? Uh, uh, shooting days, 14 days. So, which yeah, so uh, over, okay. spread over spread over three weeks, spread over three yeah. weeks. So, yeah, yeah. so, you know, quick running and gunning in mostly, you know, dark, uh, dark skies uh, did the did the weight of this film, like by the end of it, did you feel like a vampire yourself? And for some reason, like my last, like three movies have all been, they all take place in the dark. So yeah, you do, it does mess with your head. It does seriously mess with your head. And you, you do start to sort of hunch over and like creep around like this. But uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it has an effect. I'm glad you made through it. And that uh, Thank you're you. still <laughs> Thank you. you're yeah. still full of humanity now, which is good. <laughs> yes. Oh man! So yeah. um, this film, of course, playing at the festival. Uh, is there any plans yet on where this film will be playing after the festival? 
Uh, we are uh, playing uh, at uh, the Vancouver Film Festival, uh, premiering there on October 1st. Uh, there are many submissions out and we're waiting to hear about, you know, the next festivals and about, uh, you know, distribution. It's all, all up in the air right now. Okay, well, uh, just people keep posted and, uh, you know, look out and f- just keep the ear to the ground about kicking blood and uh, eventually yes, everybody should be able to get to see it. So, uh, Blaine, thank you so much for talking to me with talking with me today. And uh, yeah. I look forward to more people getting to check this out. Yeah, pleasure's all mine. I look forward to that as well. <laughs>